Hello everyone, welcome back to our ongoing tutorial about C++. This is going to be uh, lesson 29a, and we're going to be talking a bit about vectors. Um, you'll notice that I have included the library for vector up here. And before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about what vectors are. Um, vectors are a lot like arrays. They're known as a template, um, which means that they can handle a lot of different types of data input. They can do a lot of different things, basically. Um, I think that it's very important to show everyone the power of array or the power of vectors in comparison to arrays, which I think are a little more weak and cumbersome. So without any further ado, I will show you guys how to use vectors. So we're going to start with the word vector, and then we're going to declare a vector of a certain type. And in this case, we'll do int. Um, I'm sure you guys are noticing the difference in how we declare this. Uh, we kind of have it in sort of HTML uh, brackets there, and that is how we declare a vector of a said type. Um, you can do any type here. You can do int double care string. Um, when we get into making our own classes, you can make it one of your own class. So it's really up to you how you guys want to do that. Um, there's a lot of room for flexibility with these too, because um, well, let's first name it. We'll just call it V int. And before I carry on, you're going to notice that I didn't specify any size for it. And that was an option when we were dealing with um, arrays in in general. We didn't have to specify a size, but if we didn't, there there were going to be some issues that come along with it. Um, I didn't really get into uh, dynamic memory allocation because I figured it was a little beyond the scope, but um, dealing with arrays, there's a lot of different ways that you can cause a memory leak in your program, and those don't happen when you're using a vector because of the way we propagate them. Um, you can create and destroy elements on a vector at will. Um, once you mention the size of an array, it's fixed. You can't change it. You have to delete that array and move all the data from it over to a new array. So we're not going to have to do that with vectors. Vectors are a lot more flexible. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm sure you all remember this uh, for loop, where we do uh, int i is equal to 0. i is less than, um, let's say, 10. And we'll just do an i++, plus plus, set up our scopes. And so what we do here is we're going to take v int, which is our array, and we're going to do what's called a pushback. Um, it's push underscore back and we're just going to push back for what's an i. And then the output loop for this is the exact same as a normal array. But what I'm going to do here in our conditional, you see how it's less than 10 here? What if we don't know, you know, how, how much, or, you know, how big the array is, or, well, how big the vector is? What if we don't know that? What we can do is we can do i is less than v int dot size and then we get a a little open and close sort of parentheses here and then we're just going to increment i same thing we're going to see out v int of i and i screwed up my lettering there and then end l so when we do this, and I just want to close that start page, when we do this, it should just be the, the numbers 0 through 9. Print it out one per line. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened, 0 through 9, uh, which is, of course, 10 digits, as you all know. Um, but let's say, let's, let's comment this out, and let's do things a little differently. Now, we still have this v int, right? But let's say we don't know how many, uh, how many sort of, 
Oh, apparently I didn't do that quite how I wanted to. Let's say we don't know how many entries the user is going to put in. Here's what we'll do. We'll take in a, an int called x, and we'll see out and say how many people are playing the game. I don't know what kind of game, but we're going to use a game. We're going to see in for x. Then we're going to... I'm just going to toss that other stuff down a little lower. Then we're going to simply make a for loop. And we're going to say for int i equals 0. i is less than x. i plus plus. And then for each one, we're going to say c out. Uh, let's just say um, backslash n. And then enter the score for player. And then we're going to output i. We're going to C in um, V int dot pushback X. And so then after that's done, we're going to come down here and we're going to output it. So we're going to do four uh, int I equals zero i is less than v int dot size have our little brackets there i plus plus and then we're going to see out uh, v int of i and then an end l so oh and apparently i've generated a few errors i can only imagine where okay so I know exactly what I did. I was supposed to do this a little different. Um, I just tried combining two statements. You have to see in for x and then push back using x. That's two very different statements. You don't want to combine those two things or else you'll have something like uh, that happen. And that's not very attractive, is it? Um, that's just, when you see a big error like this where it says note, and then you know basic i stream etc it's telling you how you can pass different types of data around it's very sort of ugly uh ugly business um but that only happens when you make errors when you're trying to pass a, a variable or a function the wrong way so in this case we're going to do this again and let's say that uh, seven people are playing the game. And the score for player zero is going to be um, 10. The score for player one is going to be 20. Two is 30. Three is 40. Four is 50. Five is 60. Six is 70. Seven is 80. And so, as I'm sure you can see, that. Uh, that went well enough. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that just happened the way it did. Um, it asked me to enter more than I thought it would, which is kind of strange. Um, oh, I know why. <laughs> this is one of the dangers of variable reuse and also known as why we shouldn't reuse the test um, for our loop because that's kind of a dangerous thing. Um, let's make this int y. That was actually a really kind of dumb maneuver. C and y and push back y and I also want to add just a uh, space here or two spaces here and get rid of the space there there we go. Okay, so that should make the whole program look a little bit better. Okay, so let's say we have five people playing the game. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And so that's more what we were looking for. Last time I made a, a huge glaring error and reused X, so then I was resizing things and things got kind of ugly. 
but as you can see that time we've we've stored uh, five variables in the vector we can change that and store however many we want um, Again, we don't necessarily need to know the size because we have this uh, size uh, function that's included within vector, which is extremely useful. I, I mean, that's one of the things that I really gush about when it comes to vector. I think it's tremendously helpful. Um, there is also going to be other different uh, things we can do when it comes to vectors there are a lot more uh, ways to use a vector that we're going to be getting into but for now what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to do something like I just did above um, I want you guys to just create a, a simple vector propagate it with data and once you're done propagating it with data um, using pushback of course I want you guys to see if you can maybe, hmm, why don't you guys try to reverse uh, the data from that and put it into an array? That shouldn't be tremendously difficult. Um, I mean, it's, it's basically the same thing we learned, except now you're using vectors instead of uh, arrays. So that should be pretty simple. You can do it the other way around and... Um, take the stuff from a vector and put it into an array, but that's kind of child's play. Actually, yeah, yeah, do that. Take the stuff from an array. Um, say you're going to make an array of 10 numbers. Then put them in reverse order into a vector using a for loop. It's, it's not going to count if you you know, use uh, one of the other functions and then just copy it over. That's that's no fun. So in this case, use a for loop. And I think that you guys will get a little bit of a learning experience on this one. All right, well, this is it for uh, tutorial number 29A. I'm Damien here on behalf of cppforbeginners.com and the Reddit University class uh, 198. If you guys should need any more help, please let me know, uh, comment down below, or shoot me a message on one of the many websites that I'm on. Thanks a lot, and have a good day.